gathering here on extremely short notice, uh, on a morning, on a weekday, uh, and I know you're here to see this great young talent that just <laughs> spoke. These two leaders are the future uh, of this region and of this state, uh, and one of the things that I will want to do as your next governor is bring forward our talent in the state because we need to prepare not just for now and this moment, but for the generations to come. And, and we do that by inspiring uh, our leaders uh, and preparing for uh, a, a future that we expect to be and intend to be and are gonna insist is a progressive future for this state. Uh, and I'm also, I wanna say a special thank you to Sarah and Jenny uh, who did so much to organize this event uh, it's incredible, first of all, to be here in this spot mm -hmm. and to understand uh, what this building represents and what it has become and what it means about bringing, bringing forth innovation mm -hmm. and creativity and energy uh, in Cincinnati. It's something we need to do more of all across the state of Ohio uh, and also the leadership uh, in this room. And I want to give a shout out to uh, my longtime friend, uh, we don't say old friend, do we, yeah. Steve? <laughs> uh, Steve Driehaus, uh, who, is, who is supporting me and was uh, your congressman and most recently served our country uh, over in Africa till they finally uh, figured out who he was and he figured out who he was and he's now come home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look forward to see what Steve uh, has to do uh, next and he's a fountain of advice uh, to me. Uh, I also just want to say that uh, we kicked off this campaign and it's less than 24 hours old. So, uh, you know, it's a bit of a scramble for us and we're, for me, I'm blowing some of the rust off of being on the campaign trail and you can help me on that. Uh, and they tell me uh, that uh, in, the, in a governor's race, people are going to want to see not just what's in my head, but more of what's in my heart. And I understand that and I'm very receptive to that and we'll work on that, all right? Uh, but I also want to say a special word about a special person in this room who many of you know, uh, the interim campaign manager for the campaign, getting us started, uh, he hasn't made a commitment for the long run just yet, uh, is Luke Blocher, who many of you know. Okay. Luke brought not just uh, a great uh, personality and skills, uh, and I've known him for uh, for a, a, a long time now, uh, you know, 10 years. Uh, he ran my campaign in 2008, and that was a great campaign. It was a joyous campaign, and we want to have a joyous campaign again. You'll remember that year, many of you. Uh, it was the year that uh, President Barack Obama became president, was elected uh, president, and he was campaigning all throughout Ohio, and we had a special election that year for Attorney General because our Attorney General had resigned in scandal, uh, and that was a difficult thing to, uh, to have to surmount in running for the special election for that office. I was that candidate, and Luke ran my campaign, and we got 2.88 million votes that year, uh, the most votes any Democratic non-presidential campaign has ever received in the state of Ohio. So Luke brings instant credibility, and he's already uh, getting me organized, which is no small task. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, yesterday, we kicked off the campaign at a place in my hometown in Grove City. Uh, it's a diner called Lily's Kitchen Table, and aptly named for the themes of our campaign, because uh, first, first as Ohio's treasurer, uh, where I worked to support small businesses in this state, we had low income, low, low interest financing, a week to provide to help them grow jobs in our communities. Then as Attorney General, where I saw my job in the wake of the financial crisis was to hold Wall Street accountable for the ways that they had defrauded and ripped off Ohioans, and we brought back, as, as was mentioned, $2 billion for taxpayers and retirees in this state uh, and made a statement that was heard across the country. Uh, one of the stories uh, about what we did uh, described me as the corner boy who battled in Wall Street. Wasn't quite sure what I thought of all that, but uh, <laughs> it was a sign of the work that we were doing. Uh, and from there, uh, I was recruited by Elizabeth Warren, now Senator Warren, uh, to come to the Consumer Bureau. I was not sure of that at first. You know, I wasn't gonna move to Washington. She started talking to me about doing a long distance commute. Elizabeth is very persuasive, we <laughs> recognize that. Uh, and before I knew it, I signed up to do a year, maybe two. Uh, and then six months later, she had tricked me and she recommended <laughs> me to the president to become the director of the Bureau. And I became the first director of the US Consumer Financial Protection Bureau for the last uh, six years. Mm -hmm. And it has been six of the most 
interesting uh, and, and significant years of my life. Uh, my job there was to stand on the side of consumers and see that they were treated fairly, battling against the biggest banks and some of the largest financial corporations in our country. Uh, I was uh, enthusiastic about that role, enthusiastic about that work. Uh, we did bring enforcement actions against every one of the largest banks from, from one time or another, uh, and many of the largest financial companies. And we straightened out a lot of problems. Uh, and we built also something I'm very proud of. We built a state-of-the-art consumer complaint system that gave people a voice all across this country. And they came and exercised their voice. They tried out their vocal cords. 1.3 million people have come to the Bureau and filed complaints. These are the kinds of things that people get cheated on all the time. They're nickel and dime, it's not nickels and dimes, it's $20 here, it's $50 there, it's $100 there. It's the loss of a home. It's the blocking of their credit because of some error on their credit report that nobody will listen to them and nobody will fix. It's harassing phone calls from debt collectors at all hours of the day and night. Flatly illegal, but people get away with it because they can push the envelope and nobody's watching. Uh, we would stop those calls, we would get those reports fixed. Uh, we would, uh, in, in one case, there was a uh, military service member whose father was upset because he saw his son had been uh, exploited into a very uh, expensive car loan. He tried everything he said, he filed complaints everywhere, he finally filed a complaint with this new consumer bureau. We ended up, out of that, bringing an enforcement action that got thousands of dollars back for 1,600 service members. We did those things all the time, and I'm so proud of that work, uh, and that's what, what we did at that agency. And all of that has led to this moment, uh, and all of that has led to why I am running to be the next governor of the state of Ohio. So just, I'll just say, what is it I think people should be looking for in a governor? What are they looking for in a governor? I think there's the right vision and the focus on the right issues, and I think it's showing a track record of ability to get results. In my case, my vision grows out of my work for the last 15 years in Ohio at the local and state levels, and also more recently at the federal level. It is the kitchen table issues that keep people up at night. It's the cost of health care and the cost of college. It is looking for that better paying job, and it is finding a way to be able to save for retirement. And let me tell you what I've seen around the country. Uh, there are many, many, there are millions of them, and there are many of them in Ohio, working people who struggle. They struggle to pay the bills. They, they deal with anxiety and uncertainty all the time. Uh, many people are, are not full-time salaried workers with a guaranteed health care and a guaranteed pension, uh, but they are intermittent workers, they are seasonal workers, they are, they are contract workers, they are temporary workers. They are people who start one week and don't know whether they're going to get 20 hours or 30 hours, and therefore they have to adjust accordingly. Uh, we worked with and, and listened to and came to understand those people all across the country uh, and worked to empower them. Uh, those are the people I want to work for uh, as your next governor of the state of Ohio. Uh, and that will be my focus. My focus will be on the economic insecurity uh, and the boundaries that people feel uh, themselves and for their families, and how do they struggle to fashion a better future. And I have a track record of getting results on those issues. Steve was reminding me of the work we did uh, where, uh, when you remember the foreclosure crisis that, that just, just was a wave over this state, from Cincinnati here to Cleveland in the, in the Northeast, uh, many people losing their homes. This is what led to the financial crisis. Nobody knew how to deal with it. None of us had seen anything like that before. What we did was we put people together to show leadership on that issue. We created, in the end, Save Our Homes Task Forces in more than 50 counties of the state, including here in Hamilton County, and we brought together state and local officials. We brought together a great nonprofit agencies who do so much face-to-face -face work in our communities to improve people's lives. And we brought together people from the private sector, those who were able to recognize the problem and willing to do something about it. And it was by bringing people together that we were able to save so many people from being on the street and being able to keep their home. And that's the perspective I took then to the U.S. Consumer Bureau as well. That's the kind of can-do attitude, that's the kind of bringing of people together that we need now to solve problems in Ohio such as the opioid crisis and the economic issues that I will be uh, so, so focused upon. Uh, and I want to say that right now what we see, especially coming out of Washington, D.C., is so much sowing of division. 
so much creating of conflict, so much pitting people against one another and scapegoating people as though that's some sort of a way forward to address the issues that matter in our society. I reject that. I spoke yesterday about the Ohio way, which is my way, which is to bring people together <coughs> to solve problems. And in particular in this state, I will say what I have seen is a state legislature that has been waging a war on local government for years. Yes. 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 Making, taking the money and making it harder for people to do the face-to-face -face work that actually addresses problems in our mm -hmm. communities, giving it back in tax cuts that are skewed to the wealthy and do not improve and move things forward in Ohio. It is not delivered the economic growth that was supposed to follow from the trickle-down economic philosophy uh, that the state legislature has followed for years. Uh, and we are going to work to stop that. And I will put a stop to the war on local governments, and we will bring change. Uh, and the way we will do it again is by bringing people together, and we will start now, and we will start in the political realm of the campaign over the course of this year, and then that's the philosophy I'll take to the governor's office. And you can take that to the bank. <laughs> As I go around the state, my focus will be on kitchen table issues, and I will be highlighting the support of many local officials across the state who are the future and also the present. Again, this is where problems get solved. This is where people get help. This is where people band together. Uh, and that's the way we do things and should do things in Ohio. Thank you so much for being here today. I look forward to getting around, shaking hands, saying hello, and we will be back many times. But thank you for helping us kick things off. All right.